Hello and welcome to another edition of WP Engine Builders. My name is Nick Diego and I'm a developer advocate here at WP Engine. Today we're going to be talking about semantic block patterns, what they are and how you can use them in your own themes or sites. All right, let's get started. In today's video, we will be using a local WordPress development installation, as well as the Frost block theme. Now, Frost is available over on GitHub at github.com slash wpengine slash Frost. It is an experimental theme developed by the developer relations team over here at WP Engine. And it's a way for us to really test and experiment with some of the latest features that are coming to WordPress. So it's very bleeding edge, um, but it's a great way to showcase some new features in WordPress and also test them ourselves. So if you want to follow along at home with this presentation, uh, you can download a copy of Frost and give it a try for yourself. But back over to our local development environment. When to use semantic blocks, you will need a block theme. So whether you're using Frost or maybe the latest 2022 or 2023 themes, uh, you can use whatever you like, but you will need a block theme to replicate what we're doing here. So again, this is a, our local WordPress development environment. The only plugin I'm actually running is the beta tester plugin because we are actually using we're the beta version of WordPress 6.1. I want to showcase you know, the, the latest edition of WordPress, uh, which you can see here. And uh, so we're not actually using Gutenberg. So if you're choosing to just run normal, uh, stable version of WordPress 6.0, uh, you will need the Gutenberg plugin to take advantage of all these features. So let's hop over here to the site editor. So a semantic pattern is one in which you are assigning patterns to template parts. So what does that mean? So here uh, in our theme, we have a whole bunch of different template parts uh, added. And you can see I have some that I added myself. We're just gonna quickly remove those. And so by default, Frost comes with three different template parts, header, comments, and footer. And when you come over to the, the site, you can see them here in our homepage template. We have our header and our footer. So you can see the design here for the footer. And if I come over here to replace, you can see that I have a whole bunch of patterns that I can choose from. These are semantic patterns. These patterns have been associated with the footer template part, which then allows a user to quickly swip, uh, flip out the design that's provided by default by the theme to whenever one of these patterns that may you know, look better on their own site. So if we were to click this design with courage pattern, you'll see that automatically that pattern is now inserted into this temp into this footer template part. And we can do the same thing with headers. So we come over to header, and we click on the little three little dots, and we go down to replace header. We can now change the header to be black. So as simple as that, a user can uh, change the design of the theme by swapping out the template parts with the patterns that are associated with those template parts. Now, a semantic pattern can only currently be assigned to headers and footers. There's no designation for a template part beyond header, footer, and general. And general really doesn't have a specification because it's general. So semantic uh, patterns can only be assigned to headers and footers. But there's a key piece here that I want to point out before we dive into the code about how to actually build one of these patterns. And that, the difference is, is how you actually can insert semantic patterns within the site editor. So let me show you here. If we were to insert a template part, a base template part, when I click choose, I can choose from existing template parts. We're starting from a blank template part and we're choosing from existing template parts uh, that exist. If I start blank, I can create a, a brand new blank template part. But you'll notice here that I'm not seeing any of those patterns that I saw a second ago. When you create a blank template part, when you click that choose option, you are choosing from an existing template part or creating one from scratch. Instead, if I was to insert a header, you can start to see now that I have this header template, these different header template parts available to me. When I click on a header template part, now when I click choose, I can see not only existing template parts that are also header template parts, 
but you can also see the patterns, the semantic patterns associated with that template part. Let's remove this and we can do the same thing with footer. So if we were to add a footer, click choose, again, you can see existing template parts that are associated with the footer. And then you can see all the semantic patterns that are also associated with that footer template part. Because now I can choose a footer and there we go. And you can move it around as you would. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a little bit tricky. Semantic patterns are probably the easiest to implement, but also the trickiest in terms of definition and kind of how they work. There are basically ways for you to take a header or footer template pattern and easily change the look and feel of those template parts. So let's dive into the code and show you how you actually create a template part. And we're gonna do that by looking at the semantic uh, patterns inside of the Frost theme. So here we are over in the Frost theme. I'm using VS Code for my code editor. And inside of the folder structure for Frost, there is a folder called Patterns. Inside of that Patterns folder, you can see all the different patterns that are available and provided by the theme. And we have prefixed the ones that belong to footers, and then of course, the ones that belong to headers. So you'll notice here, if we click on just the, the base footer default contrast, you'll notice here that there's this line that says block types, and then we have core template part footer. What this is saying is that we want to attach or assign this pattern to the core template part block. So if we come back over here, and we insert. So we want to attach it to the template part block, but not only that, we want to attach it to the footer of the, the footer type of the template part block. It's kind of a mouthful. So we're defining the type of template part that we want to apply this semantic block to. And in this case, it's footer. If we come down over here to header, you can see it says core template part header. Now again, there's only two types of template parts that you can assign patterns to, headers and footers. Perhaps in the future we'll have more types of template parts, but right now it's just headers and footers. So if I was to create a brand new template part that I want, I keep saying template part, a brand new pattern that I wanted to apply to a template part, the way I would go about it personally is I would come over here to the editor I never design things in code. I always do it directly in the editor. So let's just add a group here. Let's do, let's just be really simple and we're gonna copy this pattern. All right, now you can't see anything because it's, uh, black background, we'll change the background here. How about to purple? So now we have a purple background and let's add some padding, something like that. So now we have a purple background and I have my group. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to copy this whole block. So the process when I design patterns is I design in the editor and then I copy the block markup and I'll come over here and we'll create a brand new header Let's call it, we're gonna um, add a new, a new file. We're gonna call it header purple. Okay. We're gonna paste in the code for the purple header. What we need here is we need to copy the specification at the top. We'll just change the title to purple header. We'll keep everything the same because we want the block type core template part header and we'll save this. Now, if I refresh the page, come back into my site editor. Now I click on the header template part, go down to replace header and it's not pulling in, let's see why. Okay, the reason why it's not pulling in is I didn't update the slug. Each pattern needs to have its own slug. So if we do header purple, we'll save that. Now we'll give it another refresh. 
go down to replace. And now you can see we have our purple header pattern. So very, very simple. The real only thing that we had to define is block types, core slash temple part slash header, and we've created a semantic block. So semantic blocks are really easy to make. Uh, you just need to define this block types uh, parameter for when you're defining a pattern, uh, but they can be very powerful and they're a great way to allow a user, maybe you're distributing a theme or providing a theme to, cl to a client, where instead of just giving them a default footer or header for them to choose from, you give them a whole bunch like we do here with, uh, with our footers. There's all sorts of different footers. Maybe you want this big footer with all these links, you can do that. And with a single click, you now have this footer and you can a user can come in here and edit as they so choose. So semantic patterns are just a way for you to extend your theme or the design for your client and provide them with more options to choose from for their header and footer template parts perhaps more template parts in the future. All right, hopefully you learned something today about semantic block patterns in WordPress and how great they are to extend and improve the user experience within WordPress. Again, my name is Nick Diego, a developer advocate at WP Engine. And if you'd like to learn more about how to build with these modern WordPress techniques, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos here on WP Engine Builders. See you in the next one.